When looking at async await, we're really looking at two different parts of an equation. First, we have our async keyword, where it's going to describe an asynchronous function, which is typically defined or more traditionally defined as a promise. Like we see in this example, when you define a new async function, you're essentially defining a new promise with a little bit easier of a syntax. Then we have the await operator, which is what we can use to await that promise or that async function to complete. Like we see here in this example, we have this promise that's getting returned from resolve after two seconds, which in this async function, we're able to use that await keyword, wait for that to resolve, and then continue with our function. The trick here is though, we can only use that await keyword when we're inside an async function. This means we can't use await inside of a promise or any other kind of function. It needs to specifically be inside of an async function. If you need a refresher on how promises generally work, make sure to check out my other jelly job for promises. So to see what this actually looks like, we're gonna start off with this function that I created called run that I'm simply executing right away. So all we're doing in here is we're console logging I am running. And if we actually run that script inside of our terminal after I save it, we can see that it console logs I am running. Now, a common thing for running async functions is making requests. So to start off, I installed the node fetch package so that we can use the fetch just like inside of the browser, right inside of our node script. So if I then use that fetch API, and let's say I'm gonna request all the characters from the final space API, I can then use the then clause where I can say my response, let's turn that response into JSON, and then let's take that data and we're gonna simply console log it out. And if we run that script, we can see that we do get all of that data and that's working exactly as expected. Now, as we can see, if we keep chaining on this then statement, we can really keep doing that as many times as we want, right? But that starts to get messy. And what if we need to start running additional asynchronous requests off of that? We're gonna start needing to chain based off of those so we're chaining our chains and that just starts to get messy. But you might be asking, why can't we run that statement right after that fetch command and all those thens, such as my second request? Just so that we can more clearly see what's actually going on, I'm gonna only print out the first item of this array of data from inside the results. But now if we try to run this script, we can see that we still have that first object of Gary Goodspeed, but we can see that that second request is actually firing before we get all that data. What's actually happening here is we're running that console log statement, we're running this asynchronous request, and then we're running that console log statement, but before this request finishes and then runs all those then commands, it's going to log that console log statement. But what we wanna actually happen is we want this fetch to finish before we run the second console log statement. So this is where we're going to take advantage of promises, or more specifically for our case, we're gonna use async await, where as we saw before, for this function run, we can simply add that keyword of async right in the front of it, and run is now a promise. Better yet, now that we're using that async keyword, as we remember before, we can now use the await keyword. So we can say that we want our constant response to equal this fetch command, where instead of running these in the chain, we're gonna say constant JSON equals response JSON, where we actually need to await that as well because it'll return a promise. And then finally, we're going to console log out our JSON, our first item inside of there, just like that other console log statement, where then finally we're gonna console log out that second request. And we can see that when we run it, we first get our I am running, we get our JSON data, and we get our second request. Now, whether you're familiar or not, typically when you use the traditional promises, in addition to the then command, you're also able to use the catch, where say on this fetch statement, if we weren't using this await, we can add a dot catch statement at the end here, where we can take our error and we can do something with that error. But because we're not using that typical then or catch method, what we can do instead is use the try catch for our, handle, for our error handling. So what we can do instead is use the try catch method for our error handling. So before we do that, let's illustrate what would actually happen if we're not handling our errors. So for instance, if I added a random set of characters at the end of this, like ASDF, and I try to run this function, we can see that I get an unhandled promise rejection warning where we get all this code inside of here and we can see we get I am running, but because this threw an error, we never actually got to that second console log. So in order to use that try catch, I'm gonna first create that try catch block 
where we have our try and we're going to catch that error where we're going to say if we get an error we're going to just simply log that out for now in the console but we're going to take all that request logic and i'm going to place it inside of that try so we can make sure that we're wrapping everything inside of there just in case something here throws an error we're going to be able to catch it and we're going to be able to log that message if it happens now, typically, if we were actually running requests and we're trying to chain those requests, we might need to actually throw an error here or let it throw that error itself by just rethrowing E in addition to any console logging because we wouldn't want the function to continue. But if we still wanted the function to continue, we still would want to try to get that data. So I'm going to add a new data variable at the top using let, and I'm going to say at the end here, data equals JSON. So then afterwards, we can say if we have our data, we can console log that out with data and the zero index of that data. So now if I try to run that script again, we can see that I say I am running, but now we're getting that error message right before we get that second request, where we can see that it's passing exactly what it's getting in that error message. But now we can still continue on with our, our function in case we wanna do anything else without that original request. But of course, we want to make sure that everything is actually working right. So we're going to get rid of those random characters at the end of the string, and I'm going to run that request again. And we can see just like before, I'm getting all of that data, but this time we're safely wrapping it inside of that try catch to make sure that we're handling any errors that come from that API response. The great thing is not only can we write our code asynchronously using promises, we can do so in a way that's a little bit easier to read using async await, where we can run through all of our code just like we would write it normally without having to chain a bunch of thens at the end. The async await operators are a great way to continue to write your JavaScript asynchronously in a way that's both easy to read and extra maintainable for inside of your project. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.